Amen and amen. And uh, what a time of year it is. And all of the kids are hoping this Christmas that they will in fact get something so great that it is just an indescribable gift. Amen, kids? Amen. That's right. Even the big kids are like, you know, because this is the time of year where giving is on stage. I mean, it is, it is first and foremost. I mean, the, the malls are as full as they ever are, and every store is just uh, is crazy because everybody has got to figure out how to get the perfect gift for that somebody because it is Christmas time, and that's what you do, right? I mean, because all you got to do is go to the stores, go outside, and, uh, you know, it is... It is not working. Uh, mm. It is beginning to look a lot like Christmas, right? I mean, we got the trees up. We got, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's inflatable Santa Clauses everywhere you look and, and all kinds of stuff like that. And it's looking a lot like Christmas. And so for the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about the aspects of Christmas. We talked about the smells of Christmas and the sounds of Christmas. And so this morning, I want to talk about what it looks like for Christmas to be coming. Uh, and in, first, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it talks about, uh, Paul is talking to uh, the church in Corinth about this indescribable gift that is Jesus. And we've read this passage over and over over the past couple of weeks about the shepherds, you know, because the Christmas story is all about the, you know, the shepherds out in the field and, and Mary and Joseph were going uh, to, uh, uh, you know, going to, to, to Bethlehem for this, uh, uh, for this census and they get there and there's no room in the end and the baby's coming and all this stuff is going on and, and Jesus is born and, and the Savior arrives and the shepherds show up and they, you know, they praise God and, and then the, uh, uh, you know, all of that, that the Christmas story unfolds. And it's all about this indescribable gift that God is giving us. This indescribable reality that, that is being birthed into the world and therefore into the lives of those who, who believe in Him and who will take Him as their Savior. And, and we're, we're told throughout Scripture that God is the original giver. God is, God is the, the, the gold standard when it comes to what it looks like to give. And if Christmas is the season of giving, God is the greatest giver. And all throughout Scripture we see the, the, it's replete with examples of God giving. And He shows us what it looks like to, to give over and over again. God gave Adam and Eve a piece of skin from an innocent animal to replace the fig leaves that they had sewn together to cover their shame and their nakedness. God gave Noah a plan for an ark that would provide for the saving of his household when, God, when God's cataclysmic judgment was released upon the earth. God gave Sarah this precious baby in her old age that she named Isaac. He gave her this child of promise. God gave the Israelites possession of a land flowing with milk and honey where they would be able to build their temple to God and worship Him in spirit and in truth. God gave prophets to His people to plead with them and tell them of the amazing things to come. To tell them of, of the God that, that was pursuing them. And if they would simply pursue Him back, life would be forever changed as they know it. God gave the scriptures to prophesy of a Messiah who would come and deliver, who would come and redeem, who would come and save. God gave the wise men a star to lead them to the young child where they could present him their gifts. God gave Joseph the patience to understand the, the strange and unforeseen circumstances of a virgin birth. God gave the world the Prince of Peace. God gave Jesus the place of sinners. He gave Jesus the place of sinners on the cross to bear the sorrow and the shame. And Jesus gave his life for sinners then and all throughout history. God offers to give all men the pardon for their sins that they might know his joy 
and his everlasting life. Surely God is the, is the example that we follow. Surely God is the, is the great giver. And mankind, and especially us here today, can learn a lot about giving from God. If, we, if it's going to look a lot like Christmas, aren't we going to become godly givers just like he has been for us? And so we look at, you know, I wanted to look at a less than typical Christmas passage this morning. As we look at, at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, he says, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. What God is telling us is that if we take his story seriously, if we take seriously the story of, of, of him coming here and birthing him, his own son, into this mess of a world that we have created, this mess of a circumstance that, that we have, have perpetuated from generation to generation, if we are to take that seriously, our righteousness will increase and will abound and God will be truly glorified. You see, because one of the things that I'm convinced of is that as we celebrate Christmas, we, we tend to, to kind of lean towards and lean into this idea of, of, of making it all about, uh, you know, all about Jesus and the, and the birth and, and Jesus' birth and, and then all about the, you know, the, the hope and the joy and the songs and the carols and, and all of that thing. And, and we do all that to, to, uh, uh, to, to bring attention to God in, in hopes that, that our making a big deal about Him will somehow please Him. And, and I don't know if, if that's really the point. Maybe God's not, maybe God doesn't need us to make a big deal about Him. Maybe God doesn't need us to, uh, to, to put up nativity scenes and, and sing songs about the birth this time of year. May, maybe that's not the point. Maybe those are great things and I'm not preaching against them because I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of the nativity scene. We actually have one up at our house all year long. We, we uh, you know, because I would like to say that we take seriously the, the comments that everybody makes. Oh, well, you know, we should celebrate the birth every day. Well, that, that's not why. It's because it belonged to my mom and, you know, I just have it up all year. It's kind of small and it you know, a little terracotta uh, nativity scene, and we just have it sitting up there, and I like to look at it. It reminds me of my mom. And that's why. But maybe that's not the whole point of Christmas, is to make a big deal about Jesus. Well, then, then what, what, is the, what is it, Shane? What, what, are, what are you getting at? Maybe it's to think about God's guidelines to be good givers. Maybe it's to think about that uh, what John tells us in John three sixteen that God gave His only Son, and, and I know we're, we're back on Jesus. Yeah, yeah, He gave His only Son that that whoever believes shall not perish but have eternal life. You know, maybe it's about following God's example in, in giving the most precious thing so that. In that very gift, he will be glorified. Maybe it's about when James states that every good and every perfect gift comes from above. And it comes from the Father. Maybe it's about giving of ourselves so that others can see that manifesting in our lives. Jesus told the woman at the well, if you knew the gift of God and who it was that was speaking to you, when he says, give me a drink, you would have asked, and I would have given you living water. Maybe this time of year, as, as it, become, it starts to look a whole lot like Christmas, maybe it isn't making a big deal about, uh, about Jesus so that we feel like we've pleased God, but it's about following the example of God so that others can benefit from the relationship that we have with Him. So that others can see our generosity, our sacrifice, our selflessness and he's glorified in that way you see god's a god's a really big deal and and he knows it and we don't have to remind him of that we don't have to remind god about god you are such a big deal you're such you know what we should be doing 
is acting like God so that others see a transformation in us and they glorify God and say, well, if he can change you into this generous, selfless, merciful, compassionate person, then maybe he really is that big of a deal and he can change me too. Maybe that's the Christmas message. When Paul states if God didn't even spare his own son, will he not give us all things in Romans 8 and 32? Maybe he's saying, follow my example. Don't hold anything back when it comes to giving to your fellow man. Don't, don't hold anything back when it comes to, uh, to allowing my Holy Spirit to transform your life. Don't, don't hold any portion of your life back from me. Let me cleanse all of that so that, you know, as different as you look to those on the outside of the church, on the outside of Christ, as different as you look now, you will look, the more you give to me, the more different you will look. You can look even more different than you do now. Well, Shane, we, we look a whole lot more different than the people at work already. Great. He's got even more for us. Paul said to the Ephesians, for by grace you've been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. You see, maybe the Christmas message is that as we celebrate and as we sing Christmas carols and as we go about our daily lives, it, it isn't because we're so good. Maybe the Christmas message is that it isn't about, you know, hey, look, we're, we're such good people. It's about God is so good and so transformative and, and he's given me such, such merciful grace that all I can do is extend the same to those that I'm around. Maybe we can say like Paul in, for, in 2 Corinthians 9, thank you, God, for this undescribable gift. You see, so often I feel like those on the outside of the church see us in, you know, in here and then in our daily life. And, and we get labeled things like hypocrite or holier than thou or, you know, what other kind of things. Because the church is, is less than growing Maybe if we understood and, and, and lived that message that everything that you see me work is, is God's grace, is a gift from God. He is the one who is empowering me to, to make these choices. He is the one who is giving me the grace and mercy to do these things, to, to sacrifice, to give to the poor, uh, to take in children, to, to be, uh, you know, his hands and feet. It's, it's all about his indescribable gift. On my own, I am nothing. Without him, I am nothing. It is his indescribable gift. And so this morning, I want to help you with your Christmas shopping. And I want to talk about some guidelines for being godly givers. The first thing, and just, these will be super quick, so right, and I don't have slides for them, but right, uh, the first thing about being a, a godly giver and is be, make it personal. You see, God did not give us an impersonal grace. He gave us a personal grace. He gave us a grace that we can, that we can see, that we can feel, that, that, uh, that, that we can prove. He gave us a gift of, God's, of His grace through the person of Jesus Christ, through that baby that was in that manger, through that child that was, that was teaching the teachers in the temple, through that man who, who walked on water and fed the 5,000, through that very personal person, that, that man, he gave us his grace. We can see that. It, it's not just this, this uh, uh, aloof, distant concept. God makes gift, his gift personal. And for us on a daily basis, if we make this personal, it isn't just about doing good afar off. It's like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to write this check and send it to this, and I'm going to you know, and feel good about what I've done. It's about making it personal, getting involved, going and finding somebody who is in need and, and serving that need, finding somebody who feels alone, who feels invisible, who has you know, no connection, and connecting with them. Make it personal. God wasn't content to offer some 
intellectual grace. It was personal. Not only is it personal, but it's got to be practical. You know, don't just make grand gestures. Make it, make it practical. We need a Savior. Amen? We didn't, it wasn't that we needed a Savior. We need a Savior. And I believe that if the world saw us, as needing a Savior more than we let on, the church would be in a whole lot better position to reach those outside of Christ. If we practiced life, we did life giving out the, the you know, kind of giving out the vibe that, hey, I am in need of a Savior. If, if, we, if we lived that out loud, I think some of those labels of the church would would sort of start to dissipate. So find practical, real needs. You know, one of the, uh, you know, one of the things, and I, I, I brag on, on uh, Ted and Heidi a lot because it's such a, a great ministry. One of, the, you know, one of the great things about our homeless hygiene ministry is that, I mean, it's, 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 not, it's not a big, giant gift, but man, is it practical. Man, is it needed. You know, you, you, give, you find somebody who's been homeless for years, who hasn't had a bath in a month, and you give them a packet of, of, of baby wipes? That's a great gift. Man, that is a great gift. Because you know what? They, and they wash that. Uh, whoo, doesn't that just feel real good just to get that? And, uh, you know, just, I, I mean, you know, it's practical. It's not big. It's not grand. It's not, it's not expensive. But it's personal. It's practical. And here's the one that we, that we struggle with, is that we get, you got to make it permanent. you got to make it something that lasts. That's why, that's why relationships are so important. That's why God's calling us. To, that's why he calls us to this church, this, this, uh, you know, this gathering, th- this relationship thing, because you know, it, it isn't just a, a here and gone, a today and not tomorrow. It's an ongoing thing. He's calling us to be in relationship with each other and relationship with the world so that we can make it uh, you know, personal and practical, but permanent. So that people understand my relationship with you is not fleeting. It's, it, it isn't a, a, you know, based on your performance. Is that I love you the same way that God loves me, and that is warts and all. That is flaws and all. You know, one of the things that is, uh, um, you know, we're talking about CF, uh, CFS and, you know, foster children or, 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 you know, a lot of times kids that come out of, of bad situations when, when they get into a, a family that is, you know, taking care of them and, and trying to give them a, a life and a future, there is this behavioral aspect of that, of, of this lashing out, trying to test the boundaries or, or prove that they're, you know, they're going to get left again. You know, all of this psychology that goes along with that. And, and one of the greatest things that a, you know, that, a, that a parent can do is prove to a child every single day that there's nothing that you can do that will separate you from me. You can keep your room messy. You can catch stuff on fire. You can spit in my... There, there's nothing. I will always be yours because isn't that how God treats us isn't that how God treat I mean I can't speak for everybody but I can speak for me is that I have tried my hardest over the years of, of my relationship with God to push him away and to and to cause him to let go and throw me out and to prove that I'm not worth anything that I'm so bad that I'm a sinner and nobody can love me and uh, over and over and over again God says through Jesus, no, no, not so fast. <laughs> you don't get away from me that easily. Praise God. There's a brother who, 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 who knows me. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we try over and over again, but it's, it's permanent. God says my gift of grace to you is permanent. It's permanent. So what's the point all right, Shane, get to the, the, the Christmassy spirit, the, 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 the Christmas story. Get to the point. The point is, 
is that God calls us to live this kind of life, this godly giving, sacrificing uh, life to follow his example. In Matthew chapter 2, 1 through 9, we read the Christmas story of the Magi, the wise men, coming to, to find Jesus. And what did they follow? Here, here's, the, here's the Bible puzzle part of it that I want us to put together and, and just take this little nugget with you. So all this that I've said comes to this. What did the wise men follow? Okay, somebody was listening when we sang the song. So they followed a star. Now, I don't know if it was, you know, what that was, if it was an angel illuminated, if it was, uh, you know, something, some, he- some heavenly body that they called a star, and it, was, it, it, it appeared, and they followed it, and it, got, and, and it took them to the place where Jesus was. The star that God provided took them to Jesus. God's calling us. In Philippians 2, 14 through the end of the chapter, right after God gets, right after Paul gets through saying, hey, your attitude should be that of Christ. Your attitude should be just like Jesus. Your attitude should be, even though you have all of this ability, even though you have all of this power, even though you have all of this standing, you should let go of all that and, and just be the kind of person that Jesus was. You should, you should be humble. Not thinking that your standing, your station is something to be leveraged for your own good, but that it's something that you can take and use to benefit others. Your attitude should be that of Christ. And he says if you do that, if you do that, you will be, here it is, if you have an attitude like Christ, you will be like shining stars. And what will we be doing? I'm going to bring you the microphone. You keep mouthing that to me. My sweet daughter's over there. She's like, we're bringing people to Jesus. That's the point. That's the point. We're not shining like stars so so that all of us can look around and say, oh, look at that. Oh, look 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 at Shane up there shining. He's such a good star. Oh, look at Michelle. She's, a, she's quite twinkly today. Oh, look over here. Look at Matt. New guy. It's Matt, right? Yeah. Look at Matt. Yeah. Ne- never do that when you're unsure. You think, well, it's, it's, I thought it was Matt. Is it Matt? Look at the new guy over here. Sprinkly, twinkly. No. We are stars in the darkness to lead people to Jesus. To lead them to Jesus. And no other reason other than to to stand out in the the darkness, in the black, and and, and to be this this light. Not a light that's able to, to drive out all the darkness, but just enough to get the attention of other people so that as they follow us, they will find Jesus. They will find Jesus. Okay. So the question is, is it beginning to look a lot like Christmas? Is it beginning to look a lot like Christmas? I mean, we're, there's trees. There's, there's pine cones and whatever this stuff is. What is that? Asparagus? What is that? Oh, no, that's, that's okay. I, I mean, there, you know, we've got... You know, there's Santa hats and elves and, you know, and, and inflatables and lights everywhere. But are God's people stars? Are God's people shining like stars bringing others to Jesus? Because that's what he's calling us to do. For no other reason. We're, we're, we're to be transformed. You know, our, our salvation, a lot of times I was talking to a sister this morning, I said, look, you know, the point of this sermon is going to be our salvation is not so that we can get saved and be excited about that and sit back and just think, oh, look at me, I'm saved. Whew. I'm glad I'm not like all those unsaved people. God is so good because I am so saved. The point is, is to save us 
so that we can be stars and we can guide people to Jesus so that in Acts, can the, the word he says, I want everybody, everybody everywhere to come to the knowledge and the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Is it beginning to look a lot like Christmas? It's going to be, you know, the Christmas season is is tough what, what with all the shopping and the decorating and all of that but can we take the true message the birth of Jesus into the world and lead others to him so that they can be stars as well we're about to sing a song I don't have my bulletin what's our next song what's our trust and obey trust and obey this morning if we will do that we will be like stars shining in the darkness. And Christmas will truly come for those who so desperately need it. Will you stand with me as together we stand and sing?